Hello. So my name is Sebastian Bello. I'm a, I'm a um, field application engineer from uh, this uh, French company called uh, Bioaxial. Uh, do I have? A, yeah. Uh, so. Okay. So we are a French-based company in, in Paris, and we develop a, a super-resolution module that improves the resolution of uh, confocal or whatever wide field uh, fluorescence microscopy to be general. So I will explain uh, you the, the concept. So thank you for having us I'm with my uh, colleague uh, Alberto. And, uh, Thank you for, thanks for the previous uh, speaker who talked ad about a lot of things that uh, basically set the, <laughs> the stage for me. So as uh, most of you probably know, the dream of uh, most biologists uh, to, to really understand life is to, will be to, to detect uh, individual molecules within their living context, if they could. But uh, because of, of the limit of resolution of optical uh, device, of uh, optical microscopes, because of lens, basically, there's a, a diffraction limit, something that we call the diffraction limit. And uh, we can't go beyond this limit, around uh, 250 nanometer of lateral resolution. Uh, it's depend of the color, of the color because the resolution is uh, depending on the wavelength, as you probably know. And uh, this is basically where we, we, we can go with a, a good fluorescence microscope, 250 nanometer in lateral XY resolution. So everything smaller than that needs something else to, to basically be able to, to be detected and to be understood. So, uh, the biologists need this improvement of resolution. So basically, it's not because there was a limit that nobody tried to, to go beyond. And uh, basically, at some point, we finally were able to, to, to break this both barrier. And uh, that led to the Nobel Prize of uh, uh, chemistry in 2014. Uh, given for, to those three guys, uh, Eric Betzig, uh, Stefan L. and uh, Morner. So basically, uh, the, the Nobel Prize was uh, for basically two, two, two specific uh, super resolution modality, if I can say. But uh, super resolution is a new field, is a brand new field of uh, optical microscopy, of even fluorescence microscopy that uh, break the, the, the limits of uh, resolution. So this is different techniques. So to, to basically set uh, the stage, to, to, to talk you a little bit about all those techniques that uh, break the limit of dif uh, of uh, resolution, there's basically the localization techniques, and we also talk about single molecule localization, and there's the depletion techniques, where we basically in point scanning mode, like you heard about in confocal microscopy, you will basically shape the illumination point, and uh, there's the structured illumination techniques. So basically, in a single molecule localization, uh, if you think about the single point of, uh, of fluorescence, uh, when you really think at the molecular level of what is happening, there's not uh, just, the fluorescence is not coming from just one molecule. It's come from a bunch of molecules. So basically, when you, 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 you know that and you add the fact that each point is not a really precise point, but it's something spread. It's a, it's a, it's a balloon. Uh, how you do? How you, 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 you can improve this resolution? So the idea was really sim simple. Uh, a, a, ch a child could <laughs> have this, uh, this idea. Well, the, the idea was to, to, to separate the fluorescence of each point. 
in one point of fluorescence, I know that I have many points, but they are, they, they are bigger than what they are supposed to be. So if I manage to separ separate them, I will, uh, by a, a, a mathematical function, be able to retrieve the, the, the point from where it comes from. So basically, the, the great idea was to separate all those molecules in times. So basically, if of, on my uh, fluorescent sample, I manage to separate all the, the, the fluorophores in time, and all the fluorophores that are normally close to each other in times, if I manage to make my sample blink, I will, with a simple Gaussian function, be able to retrieve the center of the fluorescence and improve the resolution. So the single molecule localization techniques are basically just uh, pointillism techniques, blinking techniques. And uh, they basically there's a difference between palm and storm, and it's really simple. In palm, you just use fluorescent protein, and in storm, you use organic fluorophores. So here, you, you make the, the, the blink by using uh, fluorescent, fluorescent uh, uh, photoactivable proteins or photoconvertible proteins, and you make the switch all the time uh, from a dark state to a, a fluorescent state or from a, a green fluorescent state to a red fluorescent state, and you manage to, to basically play with a sample like that, with a sequence of events. I photoactivate you with UV light. I make my fluorescence of a, of a, of a green fluoro, fluorophore, of a red fluorophore, and then I put a, a bunch of uh, uh, fluorescent light to, to make it uh, bleach. So, so if you really want to understand uh, fluorescent uh, uh, super resolution, you need to, to play with all the concepts you heard this, uh, from this morning. Because here I'm talking about uh, photo conversion, I'm talking about photo bleaching, so you, you need to remember all of that. So with STORM, now you use uh, organic fluorophore, so uh, some things like uh, the cyanine, Alexa, and you, you manage basically to, 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 to make the, 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 the preparation, the fluorophore blink as well. And uh, there's different way to do that. Either you use um, the concept of fret. I'm not sure if you remember what it is. So if you have two fluorophore cl close to each other, one will give its energy to the other that will fluoresce. So by this way, you can manage to make things uh, blink, but the, the most uh, famous way to, to, to do that would be to basically uh, change your, your me preparation medium and to, pre to, to make a privation of oxygen of, of your medium, and that will lead to, to basically when you, 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 you go on the fluorescence process, when you go to, from the fundamental state to the excited state to the second excited state, you will basically put, put the, all your fluorophore in what we call a, do, a, a dark state. And then you come back to, to the fundamental state without fluorescence. And then you can <coughs> go back to a, a, a fluorescent state. But all the molecules will go in this fluorescent state in a, in a, in, in a stochastic way not all at the same time. And you will basically, to make a long story really, really short, uh, have a, 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 um, a, a sample that will blink, basically. And you make a bunch of images, a, sequence, a, a huge sequence of uh, images, where for on, on, on the first frame I will have this, on the second frame I will have this, and you will have three, a uh, few thousand, a few, few, thousand of images, and you will recreate uh, uh, a super resolution image by this way. So this is all what we call the single localization, uh, uh, single molecule localization methods, or palm storm, if you use fluorescent protein or organic fluorophores. So this is uh, how it's done. Now there's a new, uh, there's a, another super way to do super resolution. So those techniques are wide field techniques, see? And they are most of the time combined with uh, a certain type of illumination that we call TIRF, with a uh, nevanescent uh, uh, illumination. But OK, so this is something that was uh, said this morning, too. OK, now with a STED, it's a point scanning method. Here it's a wide field. Here it's a point scanning method. So basically, the idea here 
STED stands for uh, Stimulated Emission Depletion Microscopy. Here the concept is really simple. Uh, let's uh, remember about uh, point scanning microscopy, point scanning confocal microscopy. You use a laser, light amplificated uh, light, uh, light uh, really amplificated, monochromatic. You, you scan the sample point by point and you have the emission. Now uh, people found out that if you use a second laser and you give a shape to this laser, a donut shape to this laser, and uh, if I use, uh, let's say, 488 excitation right here, I got my uh, emission, my, my green emission of fluorescence. Now, if I put the second laser, so I superimpose it to the first uh, excitation laser in, in far red, a, a certain phenomenon will happen all around. You will basically sculpt the emission of fluorescence, and you will basically deplete the D stands for depletion. You will make a depletion of the fluorescence all around. And by doing this, you can reach something like 50 nanometer of resolution, and it's a, it's a point scanning method. So the result is, uh, is pretty great. Another way to, to, to do super resolution is to basically uh, use uh, what we call structured illumination. Uh, someone was talking about that. Uh, the first type of structured illumination what, uh, was uh, the, the apotome that was sold by, by Zeiss. It was uh, able to, to perform some optical section, but now we structure the illumination to do something different, to basically modulate the light, to create a pattern, a sinusoidal pan pattern of illumination, and this will uh, have some funny uh, effect with uh, emission of fluorescence pattern, and this, this will create basically some high frequencies. And those high frequencies will be information that are basically hidden, that are uh, filtered out by the opticals, by the, by the optics, by the lens. And basically, it's a way to code information and to mathematically retrieve it after uh, the, the objectives and to improve the resolution. This is the principle of SIM. And the way it's done, it's by using a grid, basically, uh, and, uh, and uh, by making those grid moving. So that uh, gives you a set of 15, uh, of 15 different images. So basically, to make one uh, super resolution SIM uh, image, I need 15 images with a grid moving in, uh, in different dire direction. So this is a, and this is a wide field technique. So here it's a point, it's a point uh, scanning technique, wide field and wide field. Now what we, we, we observed from all those super resolution techniques is the fact that uh, you always have to, gi to give something. What uh, you need to realize is uh, this is basically the first sentence that was said today. Uh, what is, uh, what make, made the fluorescent microscopy great is the fact that it's, it's easy. Everybody can, can perform super, uh, fluorescent microscopy. You just need something like one or two hours of training, and then you can go. You can use the system, so it's easy. It's, uh, it uses light. We, we live with light. Plants live with light. So light is uh, non-toxic. It's non uh, it's, uh, you, 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 you live with light. So it's uh, help to maintain the cell integrity, and you can uh, study life, life science with, uh, with light. So this is what is great uh, in fluorescent microscopy. And um, a lot of microscopes are, are so cheap that every lab can, can afford to have one. So basically what we observe is that uh, for, for uh, a confocal microscope, a wide field microscope, all those things were maintained. But now, with all the new super resolution techniques, we have to give away something. With the STED, you use a second laser. So basically, using two lasers instead of one, you, 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 you don't maintain the cell integrity anymore. You are phototoxic. Uh, with uh, most of the super resolution system, it's really expensive. No, no a single, a small lab can, can buy it. So basically, the cost of on ownership is a uh, jump, jump very high, and you can't you can't think about buying one. 
and uh, the, 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 the technical simplicity is, uh, is, is gone with uh, all the techniques of, uh, of, of palm storm. You ever have to know very well the transfection, <laughs> know what uh, fluorophore I have to use, and know very well this fluorophore, if it's MAO, SkyD, or whatever uh, fluorescent photoconvertible protein you want to use. So, and, and uh, ever uh, 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 transfection, you have to be a, a molecular biologist to, 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 to do that, so it's not easy. Uh, and uh, and uh, with, a, with, a, with a storm, you have to, to, to basically learn how to prepare your sample. I know I, I have a lot of fellow core facility engineers who basically, now it has been uh, something like four or five years since they started to do some uh, storm uh, super resolution, and nobody in their core facility use this by themselves. It's not a technique that you can just learn to a user and that will use it alone. So it's, it's, it's complex, it's just complex. So now you start to realize that uh, with most of the super resolution techniques, there's something you will give back. So basically, the idea of, uh, of, uh, of bioaxial with this module, the coding, is to, to bring something that address all those challenges, because it's challenges. There's no one single super resolution module that address those three things at the same time. And this is the idea with the coding. So now I will explain you how it works. So the coding stands for conical diffraction uh, microscopy, and the core of, of our system is conical di diffraction. This is a, an optical phenomenon, something really complex, basically, that uh, basically the, the story uh, is uh, the fact that it was uh, something that was predicted, mathematically predicted. Nobody observed this, it's just w some genius who, in, in, on a paper, uh, uh, found out that this thing can uh, exist. And uh, later, it was discovered. They found a crystal who, 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 who do this uh, phenomenon. And uh, the, the, the funny thing is that it was uh, not used for anything but to prove that uh, the, the light is a wave. See, you, know, you all know that uh, light is a wavelength. So basically, this phenomenon was, uh, was uh, basically used uh, to, to, to describe that. And uh, it was not used. It, it didn't have a practical use until Gabriel Sira, the invent, inventor of, uh, of this technology, the CTO of Bioaxial, decided to use that to perform uh, microscopy. At the beginning, he, he wanted to use it in light microscopy, but he, he was well advised, uh, and uh, uh, someone advised him to, to do it in fluorescent microscopy. And now it led us to to develop a super resolution uh, module. So uh, I will try to, 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 to make the concept really fast. So basically, the biaxial crystal is a birefringent element. I'm not sure if you, you, you know very well what is birefringency, but basically, to, 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 to go very fast, when you, 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 you have light, you have all types of polarization on light, okay? The light can go in all type of direction. If you decide to filter one direction of the uh, propagation of light, this is what we call polarization. If you go with this polarized light uh, on uh, the optical axis of a, 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 a biaxial crystal, you will have something that we call the Pogendorf rings. So basically that means that you will uh, blow up all the polarization state of light in a, in a sphere, and on the surface of, of this sphere, you will basically destructure all the polarization state, state of light. This is what happened on a, on a thick uh, biaxial crystal. Now, if you use just a thin biaxial crystal, you will have basically with polarized light right here, something that we call the Poincaré sphere, and basically that help us, this is the basis to help you to, to use this crystal has a beam shaper. The ID and the, the keyword is a beam shaper. We use a thin crystal to basically create light distribution. See, the illumination point that you can use in, a, in, a, in point scanning microscopy, in confocal microscopy, we will use a crystal to transform him in it in all those kind of distribution. This is the main idea. This, the codim is a beam shaper. And uh, the way we do that is basically by 
putting one polarizing, uh, polarizing element before and another polarizing element after the crystal. So basically, you have a polarizer and an analyzer. Just like in a Nomarsky contrast, if you remember about uh, all the contra contrasting techniques of, of microscopy. So basically, you will play with the light in certain way that you will have constructive and destructive interference, but we don't do it in the wide field. We do it at the really compact point, illumination point scanning. And this become really interesting because with this, uh, this, uh, this, with our beam shaper and with uh, our optical bench, we are able to generate all those distribution. And look what we have right here. This is basically the vortex that is used instead. See? The donut that I was talking about, it's nothing else but, but that. And we are, we, we are able to do it with our beam shaper. But this is not what we are doing. We are not doing instead. What we are using is those distribution. We call that uh, half moon. So basically, two, mo mo uh, two, two lobes of light separated by this line with no light. So this is really important. I don't know any other uh, system who, who is able to structure the light like that at this point level. And this becomes really important when you want to, to scan the samples because this light will act a little bit like the structure of illumination that I was talking about. It will basically modulate the light and generate high frequency contents on the illumination point. And to be sure that you collect this both uh, high frequency content everywhere to be isotropic, to be able to, to, to have the information on, in all direction, we use four distribution. So the same distribution in four different orientations. See, when a confocal scan with one line like that, with, we scan with four different lines with all where the distribution has all those orientation to be sure that we collect the, the high frequency from where it comes from. Because at the molecular level, depending of uh, the incidence, uh, uh, the direction of, of the light, uh, there will be different, uh, different outcome in terms of emission of fluorescence. So basically, to, to make a, a, a kind of summary, CODIM is a super resolution imaging mod modality using a beam shaper that generates light distribution, four light distribution, both four light distribution. In Confocal, you scan with that. It's just a point. Here we scan with those two half moon in different orientation. So basically we use a poker cells, which is uh, the first polarizing <coughs> element, the crystal, and another poker cells. And basically it helps us because the poker cells are optoelectronical elements. And you can basically, by just sending a voltage, changing the, 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 the voltage, that will lead to different di di uh, distribution. So basically, we can switch from one distribution to the other really quickly. And this is what we want when we scan the sample. See? And uh, that's it. So those three distribution contain more high frequency information. So at the emission fluorescence, there's more high frequency content. And now, we, this is basically for the hardware part. We have uh, uh, optical bench, our beam shaper, but now we are not done. We need to process the images. So basically, we have a proprietary algorithm based on uh, maximum uh, a posteriori reconstruction that help us to retrieve the high frequency content. And we, there's also a, a, a deconvolution um, step, and uh, uh, which is a, a, a restoration process and uh, that help us to, 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 to reach a two-fold resolution improvement in, uh, in, in XY. So basically, this is the type of results we can uh, reach. Here, this is a DNA origami. If you're familiar with that, it's a, it's, it's a tool used to basically uh, uh, to, to validate the super resolution performance that you have. So in terms of... Uh, of uh, integration, this is uh, what you have. You have the beam shape, uh, there's the beam shaper right here after the, the laser, of course, and before the confocal, before the, 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 the confocal, the galvanometer mirror uh, that uh, help you to, to scan your sample. And uh, basically, 
all the components of a microscope to come, come after. And, uh, and, and that's it. And here, this is a, a good graph to help you to understand the height in, in uh, frequency information. If we look at the Fourier space, the frequency space, this is what you normally have. With the distribution, this is exactly what we have, and this is the, the height frequency content that you have. So for each illumination point, this is what you had, the information that you had, and at the end of the day, that helps you to improve the resolution in x, y. That's it. So now, what about the, the workflow of the system? So we are well implemented to Nikon uh, Confocal. So there's uh, two family of uh, Confocal uh, from Nikon, uh, the, the C2 and the A1, which is a, a better Confocal. So the workflow of, uh, of the coding is easy. Basically, we are really well implemented in terms of hardware, but also in terms of software. You come in your Confocal, you set all your parameters, you make sure you are at the focus, and uh, then uh, you make uh, a zoom in in uh, uh, the region that you want, so let's say these cells, and then you just have to push a button, and this button will call our graphical interface via uh, uh, a macro, and uh, on our ma 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 graphical interface, we will retrieve all the relevant information, the position, the laser power, and basically we make the Kodim acquisition, and then the image goes back in the, in the Nikon uh, graphical interface, in this element. This is the name of the software. So basically the coding is a, in, is a zoom in super resolution modality. It helps you to improve the resolution uh, uh, and reach a 100 nanometer resolution in, 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 in a small region. Because most of the time, when you want to improve the resolution, you don't want uh, necessarily to do it in, in, in wide field. You want to, 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 to have a local information. So basically, this is what the coding is doing. <coughs> and the workflow is basically the same as a, as a confocal. You, 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 there's nothing different. And you can repeat the process, so even if we, we do it in small region, from five by five micrometer, eight by eight micrometer, or ever, even 10 by 10 micrometer, you can repeat the process and start to reconstruct a full cell if you want. Because here you can see that 10 by 10 micrometer is like just uh, one fourth of the entire cell. And the coding is able to perform in, in different colors as well. It's not just uh, one color things. It doesn't have the limitation of the state, for example, because with the state, you have a depletion laser so that, uh, that uh, basically restrict, restrict the number of color that you can use. Here you can use uh, all the fluorophore that you regularly use on your confocal microscope. And you can basically, this is a cell that I reconstructed with a, a, a tile and stitch uh, uh, mode. And basically you improve the, the resolution in all three channels. So basically, to, to, to wrap up, to summarize, so uh, there's a two-fold lateral resolution improvement with the coding. It's, uh, there's a seamless integration in terms of hardware and in terms of um, software. So there's two components, software and hardware. And uh, the flexibility and the ease of use is basically the same as uh, fluorescence microscopy, confocal microscopy. And uh, uh, the great thing about the coding is that it uses really low amount of light. So it's a low phototoxicity, super resolution solution. That's it. And uh, basically, that uh, allows you to, 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 uh, to, to make the assessment of dynamic events, to make time lapse acquisition. <coughs> so this is uh, pretty much the same. So now the, the, the thing, the, there are some benefits because it's a point scanning techniques. So one of the advantage of uh, confocal microscopy, point scanning method, is to go on uh, deep on fixed samples. So the coding has its benefits. With a palm storm, with a single molecule localization, you are restricted to few hundred of, uh, even one hundred nanometer of, uh, of, uh, of thickness. So basically, if you want to improve the resolution and go deep, on your sample, on your uh, drosophila, uh, for example, or, or on your zebra fish, you can with a coding. And there's no specific sample preparation. This is the same. But it has to be a good sample preparation, just like uh, 
we, we were talked about if the preparation is poor, it will be, of course, poor with a codim uh, uh, and uh, you have to use the, the, the perfect uh, uh, thickness for your slide. Everything that we just heard, you have to respect that because uh, we claim that, uh, okay, it's easy, but uh, fluorescence microscopy has to be well done. <laughs> so it's not, it doesn't mean you don't have to respect uh, anything if you want it to work. So uh, of our affordability and fast learning, it's the benefit of confocal microscopy that you still have here. And of course, the field of application, drug discovery, pharmaceutical company, uh, fundamental biology, medical research, this is everywhere where, where the, the coding has a, can be potentially helpful. So here, this is the DNA origami. Here, this is a 488 uh, excita excited uh, DNA origami, and those two dots are separated by uh, 120 nanometer. Here, this is the result that you got in confocal. It's really noisy. There's a, uh, there's a lack of a resolution, basically. And here, we make the separation. So this is a type of resolution improvement. So basically, this is the Riley criterion. And here, in a, in a w when you draw a line uh, here, this is what you got in confocal microscopy in, in those uh, 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 metaphasic uh, uh, sister chromatid right here. And uh, basically, if I draw a, a full uh, half maximum uh, Line and if you basically uh, calculate the resolution in FWHM mode, you basically make the separation and you reach uh, 1980 nanometer of resolution right here. When of course in confocal microscopy you don't make the separation, so it allow you to basically understand the type of interpretation you can you can make better by using a, 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 a system that improve the resolution and the thing with the coding is the fact that it used on a lot, a great variety of, uh, of, uh, of uh, samples. Here, it's, it's something that, uh, that is sparse. There's a lot of contrast. So that, uh, that, uh, that's one type of sample. The coding perform well on, on it. And here, it's, uh, it's another sample that is really bright. The fluorescence is really dense. It's uh, basically a multicilia cell with where the actin is, uh, is, uh, is tagged. And uh, here you, you see, you, you start to see the filament that you can't, you, you, you can't really appreciate right here in, a, in, a, in, in confocal. So the coding is improving this resolution on something thick. And here this is the same, uh, the same type on, on, on a ma macrophage. So this is still the actin where you basically, uh, even on something really dense or something really smart, uh, uh, sparse, you improve. In, in both situations, you improve the resolution. Here, it's a, it's a, it's a tile and stitch again. So you, you see the, the size of the, of the coding field here. So uh, the coding is also able to perform on, a, on a something thick. Here, we, we have a sample uh, 80 micrometer uh, of 80 micrometer of thickness, and you can see that uh, it's, a, it's a line tissue here uh, with free, free color. So basically, you, you see all the type of performance that the coding can, can, uh, can uh, offer. And here, you see that uh, there's a granu granulation here, totally hidden in confocal that you can basically observe in coding. This is the same tissue, a larger field of view, and uh, basically, you, 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 you see the, the resolution improvement. Here, of course, there's no need for super resolution in all the, the everywhere, but in, in, in some, uh, here in, in, in the green, you can clearly see that there's a granulation that uh, will help you to understand the interaction between the, the, the molecules. And uh, yes, I was claiming that uh, the codim is uh, using low light low amount of light, so basically have the way to uh, time-lapse acquisition without be, being toxic for the samples. This is what we can see right here on this uh, actin. Uh, it's an actin uh, GFP versus uh, um, a drug, basically a drug uh, with a cyanine 5 uh, fluorophore, where you are supposed to, to, to basically assess the endocytosis of this drug. 
basically it's a drug uh, linked to uh, a lectin linked to Pseudomonas uh, aeruginosa and basically you can see the uptake of this of this drug and see all the reticulation of the membrane of the uh, of, uh, and, and the, the reorganization of the cytoskeleton on, on, on these uh, HeLa cells, it's HeLa cells. So basically what I, I, I like right here is here, all those uh, tiny points here, who really show you uh, the reorganization of the, of, of the actin of, at the molecular level, something totally hidden here in, a, in, a, in what is supposed to be confocal. What I didn't say is the fact that we are not using a PMT. To make our detection, we use SCMOS camera because we, 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 we can't afford to use a, a point detector. We need a camera because we need a, 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 a structure information. We need few pixels. We still don't use the full field of the camera. We just use few pixels, like 15 by 5 pixels, and, uh, and we benefit hugely of, uh, of the height sensitivity of the SCMOS. Yeah. This is a... The same, uh, the same uh, sample, and uh, yes, you clearly see the. And here, what I like is uh, this donut shape. At this, at, at one point here, you will have a donut shape. This is something totally invisible in confocal, and the coding help to to see that. We are working with uh, some pharmaceutical uh, uh, company working in uh, some new immunotherapy <coughs> techniques. Here, we we see basically the the immunology synapse and the perforin that are synthesized by the, the T cells and uh, attack the tumoral cells and basically the coding helps to, to basically individualize those perforin dots and to count them. This is the type of resolution improvement that you need to basically be quantitative, more quantitative. And here uh, the codeine was used uh, and helped to basically see an interaction, a protein that's uh, is uh, linked to the fission of uh, mitochondria. So basically, uh, the, there's a lack of resolution, of course, in, uh, in other techniques, and the coding helps to basically see that the, this protein is right here and will basically induce the fission, and this led to a paper with a, uh, 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 a lab at the Pasteur Institute. Here, this is... Yeah, okay. So here it's the same type of things in neuroscience, sometimes you want to see the interaction between uh, pre- and post-synaptic vesicle pools, and you need to do it in two colors, and you need to do it live. So basically, the, 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 the coding helps with all those parameters and help to improve the resolution. Here, basically, you see the protein shape, so there's a relationship between the shape and the function, the codeine helped to do it with this protein. And here, finally, you can see that the codeine helped to enhance the resolution on something really thick, uh, collagen matrix, on uh, something like few uh, 80 micrometer thickness, we still improve the resolution in Z. So, so that's it. And uh, there was some type of uh, claim, colocalization uh, uh, experiment that was made that helped you to, to see that in confocal, this is the resolution, the codeine will, will improve the resolution and be, uh, help you to, to have a best claim uh, interpretation. So that's it. Thank you for your attention. <laughs> <laughs>